Hi, welcome to the first of my new series of videos which I'm calling Beyond Beginner where I'm just going to be taking the discussion a little bit deeper than beyond the basics of, uh, of a game which I covered in my previous series Backgammon for Complete Beginners. So I'm going to start in this first video by talking about a, a process in Backgammon, a thought process that players must adopt, I think, as soon as possible. And once they've got the basics down, and I touched on this briefly when I did my videos on book recommendations, and that is about the dice distribution. Uh, what that basically means is, is the number of ways dice can produce numbers. The number of chances of ro rolling certain numbers and not rolling others, for example. And when players incorporate this into their thinking and how they play moves. This is how experienced players gain advantages in the play. So let's talk about the dice. After all, the dice dictate what moves are available for a player to make. It doesn't make the move for them, of course. You still have to choose the move yourself, but it, it limits the candidate plays, if you like, the ones you can choose between, obviously. So let's think about these dice. Each player has two dice, of course. Now, if Backgammon was a game played with only one die, there would be six possible outcomes of how that dice could turn out. Anything from the one, two, three, four, five, and six, obviously. With two dice being rolled, there are 36 possible outcomes, 36 ways the dice can be rolled. And the reason there are 36, and we will say, how is that 36? Because the dice are separate entities. Each one is, for example, the double one here, which we show here on the dice here, there is only one way you can roll a double one with two dice. Both dice must be on the one, so that's one chance in 36 of rolling two ones. If we look at the dice and say, one, three, we have to think that that is not the same as a 3 and a 1. Technically it's the same when you roll it, how it affects your move, but there are two chances of the 36 of rolling the 3 and the 1. Either this dice can be the 3 and that can be the 1, or this dice can be the 3 and that one can be the 1. So there are two chances in 36 of rolling a 3 and a 1. So when you incorporate this into an actual game, then you can make decisions based on how you know what outcomes are possible. I will illustrate this with the position that I've got on the board now. We're going to say red is on roll here, and for the sake of argument, we'll say that it's a 11 point match, and both players are on 10 points. So it's double match point. So although the cube is over here, it's effectively a dead cube, because there's no point anybody cubing here because both players only need the one point to win the, mat the entire match. So, red is on roll. And we're going to say that red has rolled a 6 and a 1. Now, he has only one checker here outside of his home board. All the rest are in the home board. And he must get this checker back, of course, before he can start bearing off. Now, he's rolled a 6 and a 1. Now, the 6 here is, of course, a forced move, because there are no checkers that can move 6 spaces at the moment, other than this one that's outside. He has to move this one 6 spaces. To here. OK. So, now he's left with... That's the 6 played. He's left with the 1 to decide what to do with. And now he can either play it, the checker that's already moved here one further space, or he can play the one in board, say from here to here, or from here to here. Which is the correct move for him to make in this situation? 